Good morning, and I hope everyone enjoyed their 4th of July. Uh, we're here today, fresh back from Harrisburg with the state representative from the 113th Legislative District, Marty Flynn. Marty, thanks for appearing with us. Thanks for having me, Todd. You should have as much white hair as I have after <laughs> a, a couple of weeks working on our state budget. As long as I have hair, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about the, the budget that was passed by the Republican majority and by the governor. It was a totally partisan vote. You know, we, we were not happy with the numbers. You know, there was some restoration education funding, but it fell way short to the close to two, two years ago, the, the close to a billion dollar cut in the education budget, which, you know, was really a hard sale for the Philadelphia part of the caucus sure. and, and the rest of, uh, the rest of Pennsylvania Democrats. Well, it hurts, hurts Grant. I yeah. mean, look, yeah. let's face it. You you look at the Scranton School District. We're a very high poverty school district. A yeah. lot of kids uh, with single parents. A lot of kids with special needs. A lot of kids with English as a second language. Very expensive to educate those kind of kids. And due to certain language in the in the bills, you know, we were excluded from a lot of the the grant money and the grant programs yes. for for our area. Yep. And, and that makes you stay, take a look, take a step back and look at things, and it really shows that there is a political tint to it. If the people of northeastern Pennsylvania don't see this governor for exactly what he has been, uh, shame on them, because we, our voices can be heard in 2014, and they need to be heard in 2014. It's not too far away. A great example, uh, part of the tax code. You know, the, the main part of... Uh, this budget that, that really upset me was the, the lack of transparency. There was no sit down both sides and, and figure this out. It was basically the day before they come, they come with the budget and say, here, this is what we have. Or you should vote on this when, you know, there's no transparency in the process. And like one thing that, that pertained to uh, Scranton was a part of the tax code after the budget, it was a uh, house bill 456 or 465, one of that. But it, it had to do with a uh, uh, investment state grant money for uh, businesses in, in, in different cities, city revitalization grant money. And the way the wording was, it, it, it was 3A cities, 38,000 population and above, but it purposely excluded Scranton and Harrisburg. And it was, it was grant money that would be perfect for revitalization in a 130-acre area, but two A cities, which we're the only one in the Commonwealth, you know, we were excluded from this this perfect, perfect opportunity for our area. And because of political reasons, I believe we, we were denied. You know, Senator Blake tried to amend it in the Senate and was denied. That's it's outrageous. It, it really is. But let's let's take a look at some of the things in his budget because one of the things he, I know he wants to do is tackle the pension problem. Yeah. Well, the pension problem was caused by the Bush recession. Let's face it, the, when the market went down, 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 those pension funds imploded. Back in 2000, the budget fund was at 125 percent. Yep. And because the dot-com bubble burst yep. in 2008 when the economy went south, it really took a headway. Now it's at like 65 percent funded. We're almost at the highest the stock market has been. Yeah. It's going to come back. Yeah, it is. And when it comes back, there's no reason for these draconian the, changes. That fund right now is doing about 10 percent. It made 10 percent last year. Yeah. But they don't tell you that. No. They just tell you there's 44 billion dollars of unfunded liability and they want they want to change it to a 401k style. Why would that be? And here, More, I wonder if, if for some of the friends of the governor you may find that 401k style has some financial incentives. And, and here's the thing. If you go to a 401k, you still have the unfunded liability. So you're diverting money away from that fund. You need to put the money in that fund no matter what sure. because it's an unfunded liability. And it's not the, it's not the worker's problem. They, they contributed their part. It's the state's fault. They didn't put their money into the fund. That's exactly it, right. It, they diverted. And, and don't get me wrong, it was Rend Rendell's the one who started, started doing that. But... Governor Corbett hasn't, he hasn't met his obligations either. <laughs> no, no. And when Rendell did it, the fund was in a little yes. better shape. Yes. Uh, let's talk about some other things. Medicaid. Yeah. Uh, I was very optimistic. I was very surprised by that vote. Uh, 
I was very optimistic when it came over from the Senate, amend it. You know, it, I think it passed 40 to 10, and a lot of key Republicans voted for it. But when it was amended to a bill and came over to us in the House, it was a total partisan vote. You know, not one Republican voted for it, which kind of surprised me. You know, you're, de you're denying 500,000 people Medicare, you know, and uh, $40 billion, you know, 30, 40,000 jobs in the state of Pennsylvania. We don't need those things. I mean, that's, it, you, you look at those kind of votes and, and you say, this is, this is a caucus, your Republican yeah. caucus, that, that is held hostage by a group of radical extremists. Uh, I mean, I'm watching TV now and I see the, uh, the Senator Cruz from Texas and Senator Rand Paul. They want to abolish the IRS. That'd be great, but who's going to fund the government? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned because Marty Flynn, who's here with us from Harrisburg, and I are going to have a real frank discussion about what's wrong with the state of Pennsylvania with the governor that we have and the Republican leaders of the House who are taking us down a dangerous path. So please, stay tuned to you be the judge. Welcome back to You Be the Judge. Last week, the state of Pennsylvania passed a, a budget and a lot of laws. And, and uh, Scranton Times, I think on Thursday, uh, headline was Governor Whiffs. No Privatization. Uh, what were his other Transportation, Transportation. privatization, and uh, the pension, maybe? And the pension, yep. Yeah. Uh, Talk a little with me about the privatization of the liquor stores, because I think a lot of people are confused about whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. Well, the way the, the bill came into the House and, and flew through the House, it wasn't amended. It was very broad, very confusing, very not a transparent bill. There wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of uh, detail to it. You know, it was kind of open everything up. And it really gave the advantage to the big store, the, the Walmarts, sure. the Costco's that, you know, were opening it up. They, what would end up happening was these big, big stores would end up with these licenses and they'd end up putting the mom and pop stores out of business, the, the, uh, the regular distributors. Because, you know, and with the Walmart, you can give away the booze to get people in there. Sure. But where you have a mom and pop store, that's all they sell. It's very hard for them to, to do that. And Does that surprise you with the Republican no. philosophy? It's all about taking care of the big, big business. business. Yeah, that's it's it. all about taking that care. That is the tone. And the workers. I mean, I you know, you go to a liquor store, you get met with a smile. Our, our liquor workers are terrific people. I'm all helpful. for modernization and making the store more customer friendly and, and uh, more efficient for the state. In, but selling the state stores for a one-time fee of a billion dollars and then in, infusing it into the education market like you want it to do, it, it's not the, the right answer. When, when the liquor stores make $500 million a year for the state, you don't sell that away for a one-time profit yeah. of a billion dollars. Two years worth. Two yeah. years worth the profit. And, for... and just just sell it away, especially now. The, it's, we don't have the greatest economy in the world right now. It, there's five, uh, close to 5,000 union jobs in the liquor stores. You know, Pennsylvania was seventh in the country in job creation. Now we're 49th in job creation in, in the state of Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania is. So that just goes to show how, you know, trickle, econo trickle down economics does not work. But wait a second. We have the Marcellus Shale. Yeah. All of those jobs that were created yeah. in Marcellus Shale were 49th? And where are those jobs? And here's the thing. $30 million last year in unemployment went out of the state of Pennsylvania to other states, showing how Marcellus Shale brought workers from other states into our state to make money. You only have to drive into Susquehanna, Bradford, Tioga County, and look at the license plates. Arkansas, Oklahoma. Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas. Texas. Yeah. I mean, these, these, these folks are well-trained, and that's who they're gonna bring up here, plain and simple. They're not gonna hire local people. And I'm all, I'm all for the Marcella Shale industry. I think it's a great asset for, for, for our area. But, you know, use our local workforce, train our workforce. You know, we knew it was coming. 
Sure. You know, why why wasn't there state investment in that and educating our workforce to put them on those pipelines? We have the natural resources. We own them. We did own them. And we could have set whatever terms we wanted to, to make and sure. there was that, that argument that if you tax them, they're not going to. It's supply and demand. Sure. You know that and I know that. They pay taxes everywhere. They want to pay a severance tax because it makes them look better. They could say, hey, look, I built... The tax money built this high school football f stadium. Sure. Or you go down to Texas, there's $30 million high school stadiums. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we should have that investment here. I was at a Pennsylvania Bar Institute seminar last year, and the chief counsel, Fran Adarko, spoke. And he said, I am my boss, the president of our company, is the only gas man in the state that supports taxing the gas companies, and his philosophy is, if we're gonna be good citizens, we, we're good citizens all the way around and we pay our fair share. Believe me, folks, Anadarko would never leave Pennsylvania because of a severance tax. <laughs> There's too much money here for us. Uh, as it is now, they're being, they're being given everything, including a pass by the Department of Environmental Protection, where they're not looking, and looking out for the, for the small farmers, the small businessmen, the small, Landowners that own 10, 12 acres whose water's been contaminated. Yeah, they have carte blanche. <laughs> sure they do. Sure they do. Uh, and when it was, you know, what was interesting too with with the the budget being my first time was how they tried to link everything together. You know, I, instead of focusing on a hit, the governor screwed up by tying everything together, and that's why he went 0, 0 for three, in my opinion. You know, Senate wouldn't wouldn't send over the liquor bill unless the House sent over the transportation bill. And the problem with that was the votes just weren't there. You know, it was like it was bizarre a world for Republicans to vote for a tax increase. With that transportation bill, gas prices would basically go up about 30 cents a gallon over a three-year period, lifting the uh, cap and franchise tax, the oil tax. And uh, they were not very eager to uh, to pass that bill. Any, any Republican puts up that vote, you know, it's a bad, bad, bad vote. And... You know, when they were whipping the votes, there, were, <laughs> there was no reception. So, so then the Republican uh, majority leader comes over to us and says, we need your votes. How many votes do we have? And I was like, wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He wanted to outsource the lottery. Yeah. What happened there? Uh, well, Kathleen Kane shot that down. But there was actually talk last week that uh, our caucus was, was trying to – they decoded something in a tax code that would have gave him the authority to do so. So he hasn't stopped on that that plane either. He's still he's still trying to ride that out and and find a way to do it. You know, if there's nothing there that that our our uh, state can't do, we we can introduce Keno. We can we can do the same thing that, that he wanted to outsource Camelot to do, to uh, to make it more profitable for our senior citizens because 100% of the lottery profit goes to senior citizens, you know, and for me, that's that's a no-brainer. That shouldn't be touched. It, it should not be outsourced to a company in, in England, yeah. Camelot. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. Yeah. What, Why would he even consider? And I think our, our lottery operates at a 2.1% efficiency. It's like well, the best in the country, I, I believe it is, in the the efficiency that the business runs. Why? Why not introduce Keno through us? What, sure. Why give an incentive to a business that's not even American to make money, to make bil millions and billions of dollars? We're going to find that that company has a lobbyist that's close to the governor. There's no question in my mind about that. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned to you be the judge. Welcome back to You Be the Judge. Uh, I'm really pleased to have as my guest today Marty Flynn, the state representative from the 113th Legislative District, who's talking about uh, the governor's whiffs in this budget battle. Uh, but it's it's a House that's Republican, a Senate that's Republican, and a governor that's Republican, and he can't get his way, can he? Nope. And it, which is very interesting. <laughs> Even some of his own party is, is, it seems, starting to walk away a little bit. Next year is an election year for you and for him. This is your first term. Have you enjoyed being a state representative? 
Yes, very challenging, very interesting. I can tell you, you did something that, that my wife absolutely loved. You had a coat giveaway, asked people to, to deliver coats to your district. Or was that, or was that Frank Farida? That was both of us, all, all three of us actually, so. me, Frank yep. Farini, and Kevin Haggerty. We were all doing them separately, so yep. we did it together and had it over our St. Francis Cabrini's. And, yep. and we take them year-round, so anybody who wants to drop any off. She thought that was terrific. Yeah, we get, and there was such a demand for them too, so yep. that was good. And your office is right up at the top of uh, Lackawanna, Lackawanna yeah. Avenue, right on Main Street. 409 uh, North Main, I drive yeah. up there, and, and uh, you enjoy it? Yes, very, very challenging. The job never stops, so I like that about it. You know, we're always we're always working towards something and trying to get things done. It's a learning process, isn't it? Yes. I mean, we went from having a a group of legislators in Eddie Stayback and Gaynor Cawley and Tommy Tag and uh, that were there for years yeah. to now Sid Michaels. Kavulich is the senior member of <laughs> yeah. our legislative group. Yeah. Uh, state senator is gone, who used to was there from the seventies, uh, Senator Mello, and uh, it's tough on the it's tough on the area when we yeah. when we lose seniority. You have to put your time, and that's one thing about it. Nobody rises to the top right off, right out the right out the gate. It doesn't happen. Yeah. You know, you just have to be attentive to your area and to the issues and work hard. and And the caucus takes notice to that and. You know that that's how you uh, you get things done. You know, a couple of the things that, that that I am deeply concerned about is is one is failure of DEP to really protect the environment. Yeah. They're understaffed. There are a lot of good people in the Department of Environmental Protection, but they're they're being starved to death. What well, comes to politics? Your political ideology. If you put Republican ideology in office, they're going to fill DEP with their people who share the same ideology as they do, you know. I, I have uh, friends that are uh, labor inspectors, labor and industry inspectors, then the people in their office don't even want them going out doing their job. Sure. Because it's against their ideology and, you know, I think that's a sad part of politics that you, things become political and, you know, just because your ideology is different, you know, your job shouldn't change. You, you should still do your job. You know, I, I <clears throat> have told this story a number of times on the show, but uh, Vice President Biden was on the show and he talked about his early days in the Senate. And he talked about when Hubert Humphrey was dying, he went into the Senate chamber and watched a, a bear of a man come over and lift Humphrey out of his chair and hug him. And it was Barry Goldwater. Okay, two people that were polar opposites philosophically. One very liberal Democrat and a cons Republican conservative, but they got along. Teddy Kennedy and the senator from, from Utah, uh, name escapes me right now. <laughs> Again, really conservative Republican, very close. Well, there's a lot of we that too down in the state house. You, you go out and you see the members of the other island. I've, be, I've made some, some friends you know, on the other side of the aisle, when when you're not in the chamber, it's it's different. You know, but there are some people who do take things personal, and that that's when politics becomes such an interpersonal thing. It's so interpersonal, and everything that matters is your word. You know, if you give somebody your word and you break it, you know, your name down there is shot. There's no nothing left after you don't keep your 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 uh, word down there. That, it's so such a big deal. And uh, I listen to the, you know, all I hear is keep your powder dry, keep your, I, I listen to the older members and, and uh, take heed to their advice and, and, and stick with it, you know. The upcoming year, you've got a golf tournament coming up on June 28th. Tell yes, me a little bit yes, about that. I have a Where's golf tournament at Pine Hills and, uh, and Taylor. A fundraiser. And, yep. And that's, and that's part of the, uh, the process. You know, raising money, it's its tough. That's what you have to do. It, it would be great, wouldn't it, if we had public financing of elections? Oh, it would be great. I mean, it really, uh, you're constantly being asked to, yeah. to raise money for yourself so you can give money to the caucus and for your own yeah. fundraising. And it's its difficult, but by the same token, it's its necessary. And, it, it's something I'm not used to doing. I never had to ask anybody for money <laughs> until I ran for office, you know. Yeah. And, and it's not, different, but... <laughs> What do, you, what do you see for the upcoming session? 
I think that the other side is going to try and push that right wing agenda. I think they're going to they're going to push the uh, liquor privatization. I think they're going to push prevailing wage. I think <laughs> I think you know it's it's an all out assault on on the middle class. I, I'm surprised we haven't had any bills on workers' compensation because yeah. that's another area that is little understood but is so so important. There, there, the unemployment compensation, there was something this yep. past session before me about uh, shorten the weeks. That they have to work more weeks to uh, to collect, and, and it's hurt a lot of uh, it's hurt a lot of workers in our area. I know that. So, well, keep me posted if you see anything coming up on workers' compensation, because I, uh, for 40 years, I've done nothing but but help injured workers, and that that safety net is so important. And we're Pennsylvania is one of the better states now. Yeah. Uh, I've seen states like North Carolina who had a great program and California who had a great program have it gutted by Republican governors when they have the power to do that. And, and I mean, ladies and gentlemen, a safety net is just that and it's so important. And uh, I guess if you've never worked for, for a living, you don't understand <laughs> how easy it is to get hurt. Yeah. How easy it is for a policeman to have a heart attack or a fireman to be burned and his Especially lungs burned. Especially the construction, the the construction, construction guys, the highway, the highway workers. So uh, when we come back, we'll have some closing thoughts with State Representative Marty Flynn. So please stay tuned to you be the judge. Marty, your first term is almost over. It's it's halfway over, I guess. Uh, what have you learned? I've learned to learn when to speak and, and do a lot of listening. <laughs> you know, it's probably two, three times as much listening as speaking, which which is hard for me being as outspoken of a person as I usually am. But uh, there's so many different, it's not a checkers, it's chess. So you have to be very careful on in who you talk to, what you talk about, what what you're doing, and uh, you're constantly under a spotlight, which uh, isn't such a bad thing for me. You come from a family uh, that has great tradition with organized labor, uh, and you've been a great supporter of the labor movement in your district and the, the workers up here. Uh, it's they're under attack, aren't they? Yes, you know I. Organized labor needs to become more organized, and, and people have to realize that we're under attack, and people have to realize that it wasn't that long ago when people were working 20-hour work days and didn't have any rights, and there was no, <laughs> you're getting paid a dollar, two dollars a day, and, you know, there was no health insurance, there was, there was a company store, there was <laughs> Tom Brogan, uh, David Brogan, who was chief counsel to your caucus, his father ran for school board up in the Abingtons, and he's been very active with the union up there, PSEA, and a leader. And he talked about the reason why the union meant a lot to him. He said, my mother was a teacher. And in the days, the early days with her before the union, districts wouldn't pay teachers. If they had a budget shortfall, they wouldn't pay teachers. Teachers would reach into their pocket to buy the supplies every year. Their wages were depressed. Yeah, well, I spoke to the PSEA and I, you come out of college, you owe $100,000 in school loans. Yeah. You're getting paid $30,000 a year, and now they want to take away your pension. Yeah. <laughs> How do you to do be that? a school teacher is a very, very noble, noble job, and it's almost a calling to do something like that. And now they want to come take your pension away? And it's the most important job to our economy. Yes to our national defense that you possibly could have. Uh, I mean, my years You look at these school cuts, we're gonna reap what we sow. You know, these school cuts were so drastic two years ago. You know, my Scranton School District, you know, you're looking at 177, no, 777,000 this year was, was put in to Scranton's district more than last year, which is a good thing. But the reality is the cuts were so drastic two years ago, it's really not enough. They're not even catching up. It, they're not even catching up. And, you know, you have to raise the school districts, then are going to have to raise tax, sure. taxes all over the country. And what ends up happening is, you know, we don't invest in these children. We don't invest in the children. It, it ends up coming out in crime, sure. you know, in our jails, and it's going to cost us more money later. Yep. And it's sad. Marty, thank you. Thank I you hope you'll time. come back and see us again. Definitely. Thanks for the great job you're doing. I look forward to having you back as a guest, okay? Thanks for having me, Todd. And thank you for sharing your Sunday morning with us on you. Be the judge.